James and the bootlace. The next morning, the fat controller spoke severely to James. If you can't behave, I shall take away your red coat and have you painted blue. James did not like that at all. And he was very rough with the coaches as he brought them to the platform. Come along, come along, he called rudely. All in good time, all in good time, the coaches grumbled. Don't talk, come on, answered James. And with the coaches squealing and grumbling after him, he snorted into the station. James was crossed at home. The fat controller had spoken to him, the coaches had dawdled, and worst of all, he had to fetch his own coaches. Gordon never does, thought James, and he is only painted blue. A splendid red engine like me should never have to fetch his own coaches. And he puffed and snorted round to the front of the train and backed onto it with a rude bump. Oof! groaned the coaches. That was too bad. To make James even more cross, he then had to take the coaches to a different platform where no one came near him as he stood there. The fat controller was in his office. The station master was at the other end of the train with the guard and even the little boys stood a long way off. James felt lonely. I'll show them, he said to himself. They think Gordon's the only engine who can pull coaches. And as soon as the guard's whistle blew, he started off with a tremendous jerk. Come on, come on, come on, he puffed. And the coaches, squeaking and groaning in protest, clattered over the points to the open line. Hurry, 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 puffed James. You're going too fast, you're going too fast, said the coaches. And indeed, they were going so fast that they swayed from side to side. James laughed and tried to go faster, but the coaches wouldn't let him. We're going to stop, we're going to stop, we're going to stop, they said. And James found himself going slower. Slow. What's the matter? James asked his driver. The brakes are hard on. Leak in the pipe, most likely. You've banged the coaches enough to make a leak in anything. The guard and driver got down and looked at the brake pipes all along the train. At last, they found a hole where rough treatment had made a joint work loose. How shall we mend it? said the guard. James's driver thought, just for a moment. We'll do it with newspapers and a leather bootlace. Well, where's the bootlace coming from? asked the guard. We haven't got one. Ask the passengers, said the driver. So the guard made everyone get out. Has anyone got a leather bootlace? he asked. They all said no, except one man in a bowler hat whose name was Jeremiah Jobling, who tried to hide his feet. Uh, you have a leather bootlace there, I see, sir, said the guard. Uh, please give it to me. No, I won't, said Jeremiah Jobling. Then, said the guard sternly, I'm afraid this train will just stop where it is. Then, the passengers all told the guard, the driver, and the fireman what a bad railway it was. But the guard climbed into his van and the driver and the fireman made James lots of steam. So they all told Jeremiah Jobling he was a bad man instead. At last he gave them his laces and the driver tied a pad of newspapers tightly round the hole and James was able to pull the train. But he was a sadder and a wiser James and took care never to bump coaches ever again. <laughs>